and good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are. Um, I think uh, this was a, a fantastic uh, um, session. And uh, we all know, as uh, we are here participating, the importance of having sound seabed mapping and ocean exploration data, Casey style, as she presented it, for marine sciences, for many applications in marine sciences, and for any actions concerning preservation, conservation, exploration, exploitation, marine spatial planning. So this is foundational data where we build upon our, our work. So this, this session came in, in a, a timely manner. It's, it's really important we had this, this session uh, as to be able to evaluate the results or assess the, the, the results of the collaborative efforts that have been going on in the past and looking forward to see uh, which steps should be given now to stretch this, this uh, early uh, uh, collaboration between East and West on the North to East, West, North, South, to stretch it to the old Atlantic and to achieve hopefully a, 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 an old Atlantic but dramatic map. So we, we, one thing that pops up from the conversations from what you, you guys said is that we have a much more cooperative environment. Um, and this allowed to, to have uh, stringent results uh, with regard to, to, to the initiatives that were going on during the past decade. Uh, I'll summarize some points. We gathered significant amounts of data from opportunistic and educated surveys. Everybody spoke about this. We had industry became more engaged in, in, in furnishing data to, to research. Uh, Jen just referred about the, the crowdsource bathymetry, uh, which was added to data collection schemes. Um, we improved definitely data sharing mechanisms and data management infrastructures, especially through DCDB, ModNet, or other data centers. Um, so um, I think more data became more available and open data policies are doing their thing to, to allow for that. And pro probably very important, uh, very, uh, very important and not uh, totally quantifiable, we have raised awareness of the importance of seabed mapping to policymakers, which are the ones who make decisions and the civil society at large. It should be referred especially uh, the tremendous boost brought up by the Seabed 2030 project from JEPCO and Nippon Foundation that was a breakthrough and gave even more momentum to this, to this challenge. Um, but we also have seen during the session that uh, uh, we still have tremendous gaps of, of knowledge and tremendous gaps of coverage uh, in, in our Atlantic uh, future map, less in the north, uh, more, more, uh, more stringent on the south. And um, so we simply have many very large data holes in our Atlantic map that we need to, to fill in. This is particularly important when we consider marine protected areas or, or um, EPSAs uh, in the high seas or uh, VME occurrences, so uh, vulnerable marine ecosystems occurrences, notably in areas impacted by trawling within RFMOs, so regional fisheries management areas. We are still lacking systematic coverage and detailed uh, knowledge on most of these uh, areas. So in short, we still have a tremendous amount of work to do. I was hearing people, uh, and I want to stress and highlight some of the key points that they, 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 uh, they announced, and I'll put some, some, a couple of my own, if you don't mind. So actions to, to keep taking or undertake uh, in this new approach for the old Atlantic, uh, and this was referred to by Casey, we need to improve articulation mechanisms across ongoing scientific projects. Uh, this would enable us to have, you know, uh, a, more, a more focused, um, uh, effort and a, a better definition of mapping priorities. Um, at the same time, we still struggle with the same point. Research fleets are flag, uh, are not uh, international, so they, they are bound to the interests of each nation. But we need to improve articulation mechanisms across research fleets. Uh, for instance, this could be done, uh, and we did something alike, if you recall, Jen, uh, an old Atlantic collaborative platform where you could uh, depict on polygons uh, which missions are going to be undertaken, who's taking them, who are the PIs to ease up communication between actors. What we don't want is like we had in Lucky Strike in Mid Atlantic Reach Axis in the 90s, where you had about three or four systematic surveys over the same areas. This is simply non efficient. Uh, 
although a lot is being done in terms of cooperation mechanisms between North and South, uh, we need to improve the proximity of research communities. Marcel will talk about this and technical communities, the operational ones, the guys that are in ships also. Um, we know that the, the, the you know, research infrastructure and capacity across the Atlantic is asymmetrical. Uh, and so we need to have to envisage ways to, to reinforce capacity building, access to technologies for less favored countries, and training approach uh, uh, to bring research communities and technical, uh, technical communities closer. Some suggestions, we could uh, try to set up uh, mobility programs for marine technicians and surveyors, allowing for on-job training in foreign vessels, um, and promote links between North and South mapping programs. And this could be done uh, through, for instance, the creation similarity what we had on the north through Aora, a South Atlantic Seabed Mapping International Working Group that would liaise with Aspire or with the, the, the North Atlantic Group and create connectivity and awareness of actions and strategies and good practices and so on and so forth. Um, fourthly, continue to improve data collection. Uh, the, the Please leave it on or put your sonars on, like Jen said. Uh, uh, although unattended data can be a problem, having uh, unattended data with modern systems is much better than having no data at all. And we need to keep engaging with private marine sectors, the operators, to, to get more data, especially opportunistic while transiting. We need also to keep track of other sources of data, for instance, the military that becomes unclassified, uh, international civil authority exploration blogs. Normally, there are standard surveys doing on those blogs. Uh, for, for exploration purposes, for mining exploration purposes, and above all, legal continental shelf data as they become declassified or released for open access. For instance, Portugal, when, when we'll have recommendations from the, the Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf, we'll have a significant cover there that will be, be made available to, to, to all the data centers, covering Madeira archipelagos, Azores archipelagos, and lots of the West Iberia margin. So before I go, just to, as a final remark, I would like to address a bit the future. Uh, although money is an issue and uh, funding is an issue, uh, I think we should be optimistic about the, the, the future and the, to achieve a more complete picture of the Atlantic seabed. I think we are collaborating more with better mechanisms. We are sharing more data and data management structure, and we have more capable technologies. This also goes for ocean exploration. You can envisage that we are getting new submarine observatories on Europe through EMSO, uh, complementing the ones on US, Canada, China, Norway, etc. We are having a new generation of submarine cables which can be instrumented for science and, and able to retrieve some uh, essential ocean variables on the deep sea. We are, we are assisting massification of relatively low cost sensors like Argos floats and biogeochemical Argos floats and low cost AUVs, which can also map the, the seafloor and shallow waters. We are entering in the new space area, so we'll have new satellites, which will ease up IoT communications, data uploads, so we'll have much more quantities of data that made available in real time. And we'll have better robotics, better autonomy, com more compact sensors, which will enable uh, approaches which are not science fiction anymore about fleets of unmanned surface vehicles, Articulated with, with research fleets, with research vessels doing mapping on the seafloor. We are not there yet, but we are getting there. So, to, to wrap up and to end, uh, all in all, it's up to us, the Atlantic mapping and research community, to keep the drive, the collaboration, the momentum going, keep pressing decision making for, for, for clever, clever uh, choices, to complete in the best way possible the seabed mapping of the Atlantic, at least in areas beyond national jurisdiction. Thank you.